I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey friends, Brian Santos here, and this is Quarantine with the Stars here on AfterBuzz TV. Today, I am joined by an incredibly talented actor from shows like Major Crimes. This is Philip Keen. Philip, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Super excited to see a, a fresh face in quarantine. <laughs> um, how are you doing? Uh, pretty well, just kind of keeping out of the heat. It's a little hot here in Palm Springs. I've been here since the uh, beginning of March. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I hear it gets pretty hot out there in the desert, so. <laughs> right now it's not too bad, but in the summer it can get up to like 122. Oh my gosh, I was in Las Vegas last year and it was like maybe 110 and that was already like, I could not, I was like in bed crying. <laughs> yeah. it, it makes you move a little slower. <laughs> right, I <Yeah>. love that. <laughs> Um, so I want to kind of just check in with you as well. How are you doing with like everything that's happening in the world right now? Like, what are your thoughts? Oh my gosh, there's so much going on from the protests and the riots to uh, the Gorsuch decision on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's just some great things to be happy about and a lot of things to be worried and concerned and confused by. So I'm just trying to keep it all in balance. Um, really just focusing on my relationship with my family at the moment, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, trying to do some good works where I can, and, and that's about it, so. That's great. How was quarantine with the husband? Did you guys get on each other's nerves or bump heads? <laughs> that's that's a great question, but we've actually been getting along super well. I mean, we've gotten closer uh, than that's I thought great. we could ever get. Yeah, even after 27 years together. That is great. I'm so glad to hear it. I can, I'm can. i sure there's some couples out there that are like, <laughs> three months looking at each other every single day is too, too long. <laughs> We were joking about that in the beginning. We were, we were saying that this is a test for a lot of relationships, either they're gonna get really close or a lot of divorce filings. Ah, <laughs> I'm sure we will see. Uh, that'll be a good statistic to look up after this is all over, like how many divorces or separations happened in June. <laughs> right? <laughs> but that is hilarious. Um, but how else have you kind of been keeping busy during quarantine? What have you been up to in Palm Springs? I've been doing a lot of reading, uh, catching up. I, I, I'm a huge collector of books, not just for their for their looks, but you know for the content. I <laughs> crack them open and read them. Um, I'm reading right now uh, because someone there's the possibility of a project. Um, it's the making of Giant, the movie with Rock Hudson, James Dean, and Elizabeth Taylor. So uh, that could be something on the horizon. And also, I'm reading about um, the city of Paris under the occupation during World War II. Oh, so. Wow. Very, very interests, you know, <laughs> something light and then something dark. <laughs> Definitely. I know one way you stayed busy too is working with Project Wingman. Tell me about that. That's right. It's a group of volunteers from uh, the hospitality and the airline industry. And they go into hospitals and set up these little, uh, so, shall we say, first class lounges uh, that gives the doctors and nurses and anybody else who's working in the hospital a chance to sort of decompress, uh, you know, bend the ear of somebody who's there volunteering just to kind of hear their stories. And provide them with like refreshments just kind of be there as, as moral support so it's a great project to be involved with i love that i know that the airline industry kind of has a special place in your heart um That's tell true. me about that story <laughs> uh i started with pan Am in 1988 uh worked with him for the last four years that the company was in business and it kind of opened my eyes to the rest of the world uh i had only lived in a couple of other places before that but uh that sort of at the time was my college education you know where people people leave high school and they go into college in their, their late teens, early 20s. I started Pan Am when I was 21. So that kind of, that was the equivalent for me at that time. That's amazing. So how did you kind of translate your work with Pan Am into your acting career now? Uh, well, it's about keeping a straight face when things go wrong. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> I see that. <laughs> trying to remain calm and uh, there were some similarities. I got to work with some amazing people in, in both careers and still maintain those friendships. So I think that's great. And, and both of those jobs for me, it was about a sense of family, you know, and acceptance. And I was really lucky in both those places where my sexuality or my identity was never an issue. That's amazing. I, I wanna talk about that a little bit more. Uh, would you be open to sharing your story, your, your coming out story, any story about being LGBT with us? Absolutely. Um, I just talked to another person earlier this week about this and there were some things I'd forgotten, but it kind of reminded me when, when, when she asked the question. Um, when I was 17, my mom found a, a Valentine's card from a boyfriend, and it led to a confrontation where she backhanded me across the face and kicked me out of the house and basically told me that I wasn't her son. And if I was going to live my life this way, she wanted nothing to do with me. 
Uh, so that was kind of hard. And that was during a break, during a double shift, I was working at a restaurant. So I went back to work uh, with that on my mind and the sting on my face from the slap and, you know, had to kind of carry on and, and get on with it. Uh, through, through the next few years, there were some challenges. I was denied the first apartment that I went, I wanted to rent because the people managing the complex, this was in the 80s, mind you, uh, said that they don't rent to two men for one bedroom apartment. And yet there were lots of women that I knew oh friends who were living together in a one bedroom apartment or even a studio in the same complex. So they weren't so concerned about uh, female couples, but they were not having uh, gay couples men, gay, gay couples in their complex. So. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I, I, but I think it's amazing how you've come so far in your career and being such a voice for the LGBT community. So I wanna know what you think would be the next steps in Hollywood, because I feel like we've come far in that front, but I feel like there's still more work to be done. My experience, um, I was sort of sheltered because for 13 years I worked with the same people. And like I said before, it was a huge family and there were people from all walks of life in every department. Uh, so it was, it was a non-issue for me. And I, so I can't really speak to, to an experience outside of that world because my mind was so great. Yes, yeah. I see. Okay. Um, what do you think we can do? Like, sorry, one second. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. My life is just falling apart. <laughs> um, <laughs> what advice would you have for LGBT actors who feel like they want to get into this already crowded acting space? I think it's just being true to yourself, no matter who you are or, or how you represent yourself and just leading with those strengths. I mean, acting is kind of a crapshoot in a way because it's, oftentimes it's not about you as an individual, it's about what they are looking for to fill a niche. And they have a, a sort of preconceived idea of what this person is going to be like, whether they have dark hair or light hair, or if they're too tall or too short, you know, matching with other people that are already being cast. So my, again, I can only speak from my experience and it's always been a positive one for the most part. So I think it, you know, if you just stay true to yourself and just keep trying and keep trying, I, I think good things will happen. I love that. Let's dive deep into those projects you're talking about. You were on Major Crime, The Closer as well. Um, what did you love most about those projects? Uh, again, I'm going to go back to the idea of the sense of family and how we all, you know, kind of gathered together during good times and bad times for 13 years. I mean, it was the equivalent of seeing a child go from kindergarten to through you know, 12th grade. We saw the births of family members, the deaths of family members, weddings, divorces. So we were all there to support one another throughout all those years. It was just an amazing experience, one that I equate to my years at Pan Am because we were really there to help each other and protect each other during you know, bad times. I love that so much. You've done so much already, Philip. Thank you so much. Um, I want to know what's next for you. Like, What do you have on the horizon next when quarantine is kind of officially over? That would be amazing. Um, I've been working on a half hour project, a comedy, uh, with my husband. I pitched him the idea and he loved it. So he, in turn, being a writer and director, went ahead and sent the idea to the Writers Guild and it's now registered. So we are further fleshing out that project. And it's, um, I don't want to give too much away, but it, it would involve a, a sometimes single gay man and uh, an instant family. Oh, I love that. I cannot wait to see it. I'm sure it's going to come to fruition very, very soon. Um, Philip, is there, yes, is there anything else you would like to shout out to everybody out there just about this current situation to kind of keep their head up in these crazy times? Um, I think it's important that we listen with an open mind and realize that uh, our struggles may not be identical to, to other people's, but it's important that we maybe share those things and, and not try to one-up each other in, in those moments, you know? Uh, just be, be a friend, be an ally. That's amazing. I love to hear that, especially during Pride Month. We need as much allies as we can get. We need everyone to just kind of come together and support each other because that's really all we can ask for. Exactly. Uh, Philip, it's been such a pleasure to have you today. Thank you so much for being here. Where can fans find you on social media? I'm at uh, Philip Keen at, um, oh gosh, what is it? Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter. And I'm on Facebook as well. So Philip P. Keen. Yeah. I love that. You're not on Instagram or TikTok or anything like that? I'm on Instagram, but rarely. So in TikTok, I think I'm a little old, but I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, you're not. It's so okay. fun. Honestly, okay. I tell everyone like to get on it because it's hilarious. I can find myself scrolling for like hours, literally. <laughs> I'll have to give it a shot. I'll ask my uh, my young cousin how to, how, to, how to do that. So Yes, it's fun. Honestly, sometimes people don't even make them. They just watch other people do it because it becomes like comedy. Like people do like skits, uh, skits and sketches and stuff. So it's hilarious. I love it. Okay, we'll have to check it out.
For sure. Philip, again, thank you so much for being here. I am super excited to see what you have next when quarantine is over. Um, hopefully we can definitely do this in person when quarantine is over because I am tired of doing Zoom. Um, <laughs> But it's been such a pleasure. This has been Quarantine with the Stars here on After Buzz TV. I'm your host, Brian Santos. You can find me on all social platforms at the Brian Santos. Make sure you follow Philip on all social media. Be on the lookout for his next projects, and we will see you all next time. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.